Welcome back to Family's Legacy YouTube. Today's focus is on organizing and preserving your family history. If you've been following along with my five steps to begin your family history research, you've gathered your family history items, started filling out your family tree, and begun interviewing family members. It's best to get yourself set up and organized before you dive into the thick of research. This way you'll know exactly what you have to start with and you won't be wasting time searching for records you already have and duplicating your research efforts. You'll know what you have and where you have it. The three steps you can take to organize everything you've accumulated are one, making sure you've digitized everything, two, making sure the physical and digital items are filed away according to your filing system, and three, making sure they're properly stored. We'll talk about a filing system in just a minute, but just make sure whatever you decide is manageable for you. You might only have a handful of family history items to organize, or you could have stacks, even rooms filled with them. If you don't have much at this point, this step won't take much time. However, if you do have a ton of items to sort through, you don't have to do it all at once. You can break it down and focus on 10 items a day, for example. And slowly but surely, you'll work your way through organizing it all. Either way, you'll want to have a basic workflow in mind that includes organizing and storing your research once you've started searching. For step one, I highly suggest digitizing all of your physical family history items before storing them away. Having a digitized file is usually easier to access and provides a good backup. Plus, if it happens to be an archival item that you don't want to be handling often or exposing to light damage, it's also helpful having a photo to refer to rather than the original itself. I'll be dedicating a video to digitization later, so that'll be coming soon. But if you do have some archival items, maybe a precious family artifact like a family Bible or a delicate original certificate, for example, be sure to properly preserve any of these perishable items as best you can. These items should be kept in an archival sheet, file, folder, tube, or box. There's quite a few archival storage options to choose from, and you can buy these from an archival store. Um, I can leave the links to a few of them in the description below for those of you that might need something like that. I'll also share the Library of Congress's preservation guidelines detailing how to properly encapsulate and store specific items. Whatever the archival item is, you should digitize it as best you can without causing any damage to it. Most likely you'll take photos of the item or scan it depending on what it is, and then you'll store it in the appropriate archival container. Once you've encapsulated the item properly, it should then be kept in a cool, dark, and dry place for preservation. For step two, you'll need to choose and create an organizational system for all of your family history items so you can quickly and efficiently access them in the future. What you'll be seeing here in a minute is how I organize my family history, but I encourage you to think about what filing system will work best for your specific research needs and goals. Ask yourself, how will you wanna access the files in the future? What filing system will be the easiest and most convenient way for you to meet your needs? Will you want to search files by surname, by year, by location, or by record set, for example? A descriptive file name can also make it even easier to search and locate these digitized files. So for me, I organize my family history folders by surname, including the paper documents that I keep in binders as well as uh, my digitized records. The two most important of my research goals and needs are accessibility and transferability. Accessibility because I want to be able to get those records as quickly and easily when I'm searching for them as possible and transferability because I want to make sure that anyone I share this with or anyone who might inherit this information can easily navigate and understand my system too. The final and third step to organizing your items is storing them properly. I use the 321 rule, meaning I have three copies of the digital file, two of which are on different sources of media, and one of which is off site. This method protects you should you experience a natural disaster and your files on site are destroyed, or if your computer crashes, or if the location you're using to store the files off site goes down for whatever reason, this rule ensures that you have multiple backups despite any potential disasters. 
Now we'll take a quick look at my personal preference for organizing my digital files, which like I mentioned before is very similar to um, my physical file organization system. So I'll just show you this. I have a single family history folder that lives on my computer and is backed up on an external hard drive as well as a cloud service. I use Dropbox. I also keep all of my family history records stored on my Ancestry account at the very least. I do use other sites such as Family Search or MyHeritage, but to keep it simple, <laughs> I make sure that I always stay synced with at least Ancestry, which is where I download my GEDCOM on a regular basis. The family history folder contains a folder for ancestors where all of my ancestors are organized by their surname. There's also a folder for logs where I keep my interview log, artifacts and possessions log, research log, uh, which I'll talk more about in a later video as well. Essentially, any organized list that applies to the family tree as a whole lives here in the logs folder. And then here is where I have the GEDCOM save that I had mentioned earlier. So you should be periodically downloading and saving that uh, as you build out your family tree to continue to have an updated version. Each time I find a new source for an ancestor, let's say for this example, I found my great grandma's 1950 census. I open the ancestor folder organized by surname, and then I locate the ancestor this record applies to. Since this is a census record, there will be other ancestors listed here on the record that I'll wanna save this to as well. But for now, I'll just show you her file folder. So within the ancestor folder, you will see a full name for each ancestor that I've researched, starting with their surname and then followed by the first and middle names for them, along with their birth and death dates in parentheses. This makes it easier to differentiate between those with the same or similar names. Within each ancestor's file, there are generally a few more folders, so a separate file for photographs, if I happen to have any for that ancestor, and another file folder for possessions, if I have digitized journal, postcards, letters, or any photographs um, of an artifact, for example. Um, so that's where these would go in this folder. Then there's a third file for their interviews, if one is available from one that I've done or someone else has done. And then there's a documents folder for sources such as the vital records, which are birth, marriage, and death records, also census records, military records, newspaper articles, and other documentation. That all goes here in this documents folder. I mentioned earlier how a descriptive file name can be very useful. And for the documents folder, you'll see, I like to start each file name using the date of that particular record. This way, as you can see, it forms a nice little visual timeline when you're looking at the ancestor's file. For me, this makes it easier to spot any gaps in the documentation um, or in the years of research because it's just laid out like that as a timeline. Now, after the date, I'll add the name of the record and include the location after that. If the record is for someone else but happens to mention this ancestor, I put the name of the subject of that record in the file name as well. So for example, you'll see my great grandpa's World War II draft registration card is in here in the ancestor folder for my great grandma because she was listed as the person who would always know his address. Get in the habit now of saving each resource when you find it. If you're using an online or digitized collection, that's generally easier to do right away since you're saving online records and not having to make copies and digitize the copies later. But no matter what format the source is in, just remember to save as you go. If you're building your family tree within a database like Ancestry, keep in mind that if you're paying for a subscription and you attach any records that require the membership to view them, you will lose access to viewing those records if your membership expires and then you don't renew it. So get in the habit of saving each source to your hard drive when you find it. Even better if you log where you found the source, but that'll be for another day, another video. There's also the option of uploading and saving everything you have to familysearch.org, which is a completely free genealogy site. By doing that, you'll have access to your online sources wherever you go. If you download the app, all of that information will be right there in the palm of your hand, at the tips of your fingers, and ready to be accessed with just a few taps. 
Again, it's really all about your needs and your goals. So if taking your research wherever you go is a primary incentive, you'll definitely want to include a site like this in your backup plan. Those are the three steps to getting yourself organized and ready to get researching. Starting out organized is going to save you a lot of time in the long run, so do your best to stick to whatever system you commit to and it will be a whole lot easier. I hope this video has been helpful and that you're feeling excited and confident about getting your research going. Until next time!